Here's the brief news from the world over this week. After the vicious execution of a Jordanian pilot at the hands of ISIS, Jordan is responding. The Kingdom of Jordan launched a series of airstrikes on ISIS strongholds, particularly in Syria, promising a relentless attack. Meanwhile, in Iraq, ISIS continues its assault on Christian communities. In Mosul, the Islamic State is now selling off Christian property, property that was stolen since the city was captured last June. This according to Assyrian International News. Marketed as the spoils of the Nazarenes, ISIS is raising money by selling items taken from Christian churches and homes, furniture, art, televisions, refrigerators, anything of value. ISIS had already imposed a jiza or tax on Christians who have not fled. They've ordered unmarried women to contribute to the jihad by offering themselves for sex and have gutted churches and destroyed sacred Christian icons and statues. Meanwhile, without the support of their respective governments or the international community, Christian militias are forming to fight ISIS in Syria and Iraq. We will have more on the madness of ISIS and President Obama's controversial comparison of ISIS to Christians later in the show. On Thursday, police in New Delhi detained hundreds of Catholic demonstrators as they prepared to march outside of the residence of India's home minister. The protest comes after a mysterious fire gutted one Catholic church while several other churches were vandalized over the past two months. The protesters, which included several priests and nuns, were dragged onto buses by the police. They're demanding a government investigation, blaming the attacks on Hindu hardliners. India's newly elected Hindu nationalist government are writing the alleged attacks off as isolated accidents rather than a deliberate campaign against Catholics. The faithful are also calling on the prime minister to speak out against the attacks and religious intimidation. British lawmakers on Tuesday voted to allow the creation of babies from the DNA of three parents. The controversial technique, which is a version of in vitro fertilization, aims to remove certain genetic abnormalities by replacing defective genes with healthy ones from a third person. Critics say that it crosses a fundamental scientific boundary since changes made to embryos could be passed on to future generations with unforeseen consequences. Some say it opens the door to so-called designer babies, where DNA swaps could change eye color, height, or intelligence. The House of Commons voted to permit these experiments. If approved by the House of Lords, Britain would become the world's first nation to allow genetic modifications of human embryos. Back here in the U.S., Speaker of the House John Boehner announced that Pope Francis has accepted an invitation to address the U.S. Congress. The Holy Father will be here in Washington on September 24th. The visit will be historic. This will be the first pope to address a joint session of Congress ever. He's also expected to speak at the U.N. General Assembly in New York before moving on to Philadelphia for the world meeting with families. You can count on EWTN News to bring you complete coverage of Pope Francis throughout his U.S. visit. We will keep you posted. Back on Capitol Hill, Senate Democrats are standing firm, rejecting Republican attempts to defund President Barack Obama's executive actions on immigration, plans that would defer the deportation of certain illegal aliens. Along party lines on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the GOP failed to garner the 60 votes needed to defund the president's actions. In response, the president again promised to reject any legislation that would undo his unilateral actions on immigration. And likely GOP presidential candidate Jeb Bush was bullish about immigration reform and the U.S. economy. During a major economic speech in Detroit, the former Florida governor said that the prospect of overhauling and fixing the country's immigration system is a huge opportunity, not a problem. He said the U.S. economy should be growing at 4% annually. But immigration reform must be among the policies to get there. Bush did not offer many specifics, but said dramatically expanding immigration to fill high demand jobs was needed. He also said he favored economic policies promoting two-parent families and closing the income gap 
by overhauling the nation's school systems, giving parents more choice. The Obama administration is continuing its efforts to enlist the Catholic Church in a push for global climate change policies. A week after top EPA officials met in Rome with top Vatican officials to discuss climate change, National Journal is reporting that the U.S. Bishops' Conference president, Joseph Kurtz, has also met to discuss the matter with White House climate advisor John Podesta. Details of the meeting on either side of the Atlantic have been sparse. However, EPA Chief Gina McCarthy praised the Catholic Church this week, saying Pope Francis and those who advise him will play a crucial part in advancing climate change policies domestically and overseas. And while Americans remain split on whether same-sex marriage should be legal, most believe wedding-related businesses should be allowed to refuse services to same-sex couples for religious reasons. According to a just-released Associated Press GFK poll, 57 percent of those surveyed agreed with a religious exemption. Even among those who favor same-sex marriage laws, a full third say wedding-related businesses have the right to refuse service. Gay marriage is legal in 36 states because of a flurry of recent federal court decisions. Alabama is due to become the 37th state in the coming days after another federal ruling earlier this week. And Pope Francis has formally recognized Salvadoran Archbishop Oscar Romero as a martyr, clearing the way for his beatification. Archbishop Romero was gunned down during mass in March of 1980 during El Salvador's civil war. Ever since, his cause and whether he was a martyr for the faith was uncertain and controversial. As an outspoken opponent of the government and a supporter of the political movement that led to the country's civil war, it was widely accepted that the archbishop was murdered for his political views and not because of his faith. The church began to view things differently some 15 years ago. Pope St. John Paul II mentioned Archbishop Romero as among the 20th century martyrs in the Jubilee year. Pope Benedict repeatedly unblocked, or reportedly rather, unblocked his beatification cause, and Pope Francis had indicated that he hoped the cause would advance quickly. It has. The other martyrs recognized this week were two Polish Franciscans and an Italian, Father Alessandro Dordi. All three were killed by guerrillas in Peru in 1991. And this week's Vatican Conference for Women got off to a bit of a shaky start. Cardinal Gianfranco Ravasi, head of the Pontifical Council for Culture, acknowledged on Monday that his office needs to expand its horizons after a promotional video was ridiculed and panned in North America. Some called it the Vatican's sexy blonde ad. In it, a sultry and flirtatious spokeswoman asked women to contribute video clips about their lives to be broadcast at a Vatican conference. The spot was praised by European and Italian audiences for promoting a positive view of women, according to Cardinal Ravasi. However, he pulled the English version after receiving criticism from both feminist liberals and conservatives within the church, including some bishops. These critics, he said, believe, quote, we must start with the abuse to which they are subjected to focus on all that is negative, end quote. And finally, Pope Francis made a confession of sorts telling a 16-year-old girl that he is clueless when it comes to computers. The Holy Father made the confession on Thursday, ironically during a Google Hangout with several disabled children from around the world. Alicia from Spain asked the Pope if he liked taking photos with his computer. Francis replied, do you want me to tell you the truth? I'm a disaster with machines. I don't know how to work a computer. What a shame. 